O to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Yes, my heart to take and seal it. Seal it for thy court above. Okay, we want to thank Brother Melchers for that song and uh, a, a pledge, a pledge to be faithful to God and to ask God to use each one of us in service. This evening, we are continuing to look at the inexpensive natural home remedies. Last day, the last time Sister Camille was here, anybody can remember what uh, she dealt with? Anyone remember? Let me give you a... Say that again. Activated charcoal. Activated charcoal. And you know, because of... And Sister Camille did say, it's better to use the charcoal powder Better to use it, the charcoal powder than the tablet. So I went out and I got myself, Sister Camille, a bottle of activated charcoal powder. <laughs> and it works. It works. My son came down with a little flu and one... I, okay, Brother Melchus, he's saying that he used it the same night. My son this week was getting the sniffles and I gave him just a teaspoon of the powder in water and it worked wonders. So without any further ado, let us, I want to invite Sister Camille to, to join us. She is a good friend, um, someone I respect a lot um, and she has been doing a lot of work with respect to natural remedies. And um, I respect the natural remedies. So if you're going to speak bad about it, you have to face me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I am a science teacher, but yet I, I really recognize the importance of using the natural remedies that God has given us. So I pray that um, we all will be blessed. Um, just call a friend, call a friend, and tell them to tune in because a blessing is in store. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Dunn, and I'm happy to hear that testimony from you and even Brother Melchers. And that is what it's all about. Once we get information, put it into practice, and we see the glory of God. So it's good to be here once again. Good evening, everyone. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessings of today, bringing us safely to hear another message from you. And so I pray that you would uh, hide me behind the cross of Jesus. Let the words that I speak be life and health, even as you desire that we prosper and be in health. O oh Lord, take full control tonight. May we truly be blessed and may we put into practice that which we have learned and see how you work on our behalf and that of others. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are continuing with part of our inexpensive natural home remedies. Let me just get this closed and try. 
F5, wonderful. Okay, so let's begin. As per usual, I give a caution that the health information received during this presentation is for general education and it is not intended to be specific medical advice. So no medical care, diagnosis or treatment is provided during this presentation. Therefore, it is advisable to consult with your own personal healthcare provider before implementing any lifestyle changes. We always begin with the word of God, where he says in Exodus 15, 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, guess what? The Lord says that I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he left thee. The Lord gave his word to ancient Israel that if they would cleave strictly to him and do all his requirements, he would keep them from all diseases such as he had brought upon the Egyptians. For this promise was given on the condition of obedience. So we have work to do in being obedient so that the Lord can fulfill his wonderful promise of health to us. Proverbs 26, 2, part B tells us the curse causeless shall not come, basically meaning that disease never comes without a cause. So things do not happen by chance, happenstance. I don't know how this happened, but we must be able to reason from cause to effect. And so a definition for disease that comes from Ministry of Healing, page 127, it says disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. So as the world is governed by law, we have laws of the land, God has laws and they are health laws. And when we violate those health laws, disease comes. But we are grateful and thankful that the Lord which is above all things that we prosper and be in health. So he has provided the information and the means and the tools by which we can regain health and prevent it. And of course, we know that prevention is better than cure. What are the laws of health? Pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness or temperance, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, Trust in divine power, these are the true remedies. These are the eight basic doctors in the house given by God so that we can enjoy health and happiness. So we're looking at some um, inexpensive home remedies, continuing as we did at the last two sessions. And of course, these are quick remedies if there is an emergency, but we have to pay attention to our entire diet and lifestyle so that some of the things will not become an emergency. And um, of course, there are accidents, incidents, and those can be treated with as the case may be. But as a general rule, let's look at health in its entirety. So we're looking at castor oil. Castor oil has proven anti-inflammatory, pain relieving, antiviral and antibacterial. As a laxative, it removes toxin from the body and at the same time strengthens the immune system. Now castor oil is the only oil that I'm aware of that penetrates very deeply. It penetrates more deeply than other oils. And so it has wonderful healing properties. And as a castor oil poultice, it can break up lumps, bumps, bone spurs. And this is where you apply a castor oil poultice nightly. And at our first session, I shared... 
information on how to prepare this castor oil poultice. Also, cysts and tumors can be dissolved because the castor oil penetrates and it dissolves it. So consistent and regular action is necessary and you apply the poultice nightly for or for a four to five hour portion of every day. With the poultice, you moisten three or four layers of soft cloth or paper towel. You fold it into layers, you apply the castor oil, apply it to the area. In some cases, you can apply a heating pad for one hour. When the hour is complete, remove the heat and keep the pack on overnight. Or without heat, you just place it on, you wrap with cling wrap. Or if you have plastic, you could cut open a plastic bag, put it over the soft cloth or paper towel and you keep it in place and you sleep with it or have it on during the day. And this is something that I have used and even most recently where I was not careful with my eating, I confess. <laughs> so I wasn't eating on time and I developed acid reflux, stomach problems. So I applied the castor oil poultice and I slept with it for a few nights and praise be to God, I am much better off and I just need to obey the laws of health by eating on time. So it's, it, it works in, even in the case of persons with fibroids or endometriosis, any tumor, cysts, that kind of thing, it will penetrate deeply and break up any, um, any of those types of things like cysts and tumors as the case may be. So castor oil is our friend. We want to have this as part of our home medicine kit. Castor oil cleanse. Some of you may know about this one, where for a simple cleanse, you drink three tablespoons of castor oil mixed with quarter lemon, quarter cup of lemon juice. Some persons may have to use a little more if they have real bowel problems, um, but it works. And you want to do this on a day when you are free for at least 48 hours. So we want to look at aloe vera now, the aloes as we like to call it. Now the gel from the aloe vera plant contains growth stimulants and these growth stimulants can be observed in action when a piece of leaf is cut, a skin quickly grows, off the, grows over the cut area in a matter of hours. Anybody ever tried it and saw that working? Aloe vera also contains antibacterial and antifungal properties. It is high in mucilage, which is the lubricant also found in Compre and Slippery M. Those are other herbs as well. Aloe vera is very high in a substance called glyconutrients, which encourages cell-to-cell -cell communication in the body. So that disease can block and break down this cell-to-cell -cell communication, which inhibits healing. Aloe vera contains enzymes that aid in the digestion of food. This is how we can use aloe vera for stomach ulcers, for colitis and irritable bowel syndrome, all stomach problems, where the aloe vera coats, soothes, and stimulates healing in the gastrointestinal tract. And this is where you cut the aloe vera, you would see the yellow sap just under the skin. It is slightly toxic and can cause diarrhea so that when using it, it is advisable to use the clear gel-like center of the leaf only. You can put it through a fruit or vegetable juicer or mashed with a fork. You can put it in your blender. You take half teaspoon twice a day. And uh, this can 
assist with healing of your stomach ulcers, colitis, colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, etc. I have used the two for my own stomach issues and it was just fantastic. When it comes to eczema, psoriasis, skin rashes, and diaper rash, you can scoop out the clear gel of the aloes and apply it straight to the skin. When it comes to burns, the cut leaf needs to be split in two lengthwise and applied straight to the burn with the skin intact, the gel side touching the burn. And not only does it bring relief, but it stimulates healing so rapidly that even a day later, there can be no sign of the burn. It actually works. God is just wonderful. Hello there. Yes. Someone is saying something? All right, I guess not. So let's look at, and if you have used any of these things and you want to comment, feel free so that it can be a blessing to all of us. We're looking at peppermint oil, 10 uses for peppermint oil. If you have motion sickness or general nausea, you can massage several drops on your abdomen, place a drop on the tip of the tongue or wrist to inhale and to soothe motion sickness or general nausea. You can use peppermint oil for sinusitis, asthma, bronchitis, cold and cough, where you rub the oil on your chest or inhale, it also helps with inflammation and pain, so you rub the affected area. Also, it can be diluted on the skin to reduce itching from hives. It can be used on your scalp for dandruff, for bumps and bruises, rub on the affected area. For headaches and migraines, you rub on your forehead and temples. For upset stomach and gas, you can add a few drops of oil into a glass of water and drink. You can inhale it to revitalize the body and block stress and also as an insect repellent you mix with water and spritz on your body or clothing. So I know I was in the country the other day and uh, there were lots of mosquitoes and insects and uh, peppermint did the trick. I didn't mix it with water but I just applied some on my clothing and that was the perfect insect repellent. We're looking at tea tree oil. Tea tree oil, it fights bacteria, fungi, and viruses. You can apply it for to burns where you apply cold water or ice and then the tea tree oil. It can be used for athlete's foot, applied to the affected area several times a day, or you can do a foot bath with drops of tea tree oil in it. For cuts, bruises, wounds, and animal bites to disinfect the area and to help decrease the recovery time, you apply a few drops of cotton swab and apply it. This also can be used as a mosquito repellent. And in vapor therapy, it can be applied. That's when you're doing your steams to help with cold, measles, sinusitis, sinusitis, and viral infections. So we'll stop at number six while we take Melchers's question. Or comment. Good night, um, Sister Camille. Um, do you have to use this with a carrier oil? I know some of them you have to dilute them first. Oh, yes. Thank you so much for reminding me of that. So, a carrier oil because tea tree is very strong and just like oregano, as we look at next, and a carrier oil such as olive oil or coconut oil can work as the carrier oil to help to help, um, what is the word I'm looking for? 
to make it bearable to the skin. And so, so thank you so much for the melchers. All right, because used directly, it can burn and burn badly. So we want to ensure that we practice safety. Yes, Brother Rodell. Hi, good evening. What kind of burns are you talking about? This is um, not for people who run out of a house that's on fire, right? No. But for no. very minor burns. Yes, minor burns. Yes, yes. Thank you. Eight. So we want to continue with our 10 uses for tea tree oil, where for acne, we use cotton to apply to the affected area, and of course, diluted also to nail fungus. You use a Q-tip to massage two drops of the oil and in and under the nail bed several times per day. It can also be used to deodorize and degerm your carpet where you mix one drop of tea tree oil per one tablespoon of baking soda together and let the blend sit overnight. Then you sprinkle the mixture into the carpet and let it sit for five to 10 minutes, then vacuum thoroughly. It will help remove odors, kill bacteria and fungus, and even the two ants, pests and bugs. So not just on the body, but it can be used as a deodorizer and dejuming agent. For mildew and mold, and mold is a very serious issue with mildew. You don't want to be in a house, a room where mold is present. It can cause serious illness and even lead to death. So you mix 40 drops of tea tree oil in a spray bottle with hot water. You shake vigorously and you spray directly onto the target area. You leave on for at least 30 minutes, then scrub or wash the area as needed. And since tea tree oil is completely natural and non-toxic, it does not have to be rinsed off if not desired. There we have top 10 uses for tea tree oil. The challenge is that students and families don't have the money to pay. I understand the fare from my Arthur Sandy Grandi through Beach. And I think we understand it too. It is quite a challenge. So thank you for that <laughs> breaking transmission. All right, so we're looking at oregano oil. 10 uses for oregano oil. Again, use it with a carrier oil because it's really strong and potent. And let me tell you up front, I had a bad experience where I was using oregano oil as part of a cold flu remedy. And uh, the way it's supposed to be used, you put 10 drops in a little water and you drink it quickly, but you drink it with a straw. So it don't it it wouldn't touch the lips or you you know you open wide and just throw it down but for some reason as I tried as I I I really tried <laughs> so the oregano oil got on my lips and uh, it burned and uh, thank god we had to wear masks <laughs> so that was my saving grace for a while, but I got a bad boot. So please, if you're using oregano oil internally, use it with a straw or pour it down like a shot. Do not let it touch your lips. And internally, it would sting for a while, but it would do its perfect work. It is even good for cases of H. pylori, which is a stomach illness, which can lead to cancer, but this is part of the remedy. And it can be used as part of your cold flu, um, cold and flu reversal kit. So it is an antiseptic. It can heal insect bites, stings, abrasions, cuts, and warts. It can be used for acne as well, athlete's foot, cold sores, yeast infection. Some women suffer with this. Um, you want to douche with 
four drops of oil to a pint of water, also take one drop in a glass of water as directed. But with this, as with all other diseases, illnesses, infections, etc., you want to look at the diet, you want to look at lifestyle and get that cleared up for good. In the cases of lice, add a few drops of organ oil they should be to find tooth comb, comb through the air to catch lice eggs. It can be used to fight infection, skin rash, one drop to one teaspoon olive oil, sore throat, prevents or shorten colds and flu. Oregano oil can also be used to treat acid reflux or stomach conditions. And in addition to using it with water, it can be used with olive oil and taken internally. All right, we're going on to headaches. As a quick remedy, of course, again, you want to look at the entire diet and lifestyle. But if you have a headache and migraines included, you want to increase your water intake. At the start of the migraine, drink one eight ounce cup of water at room temperature, not hot, not cold. And you drink one cup of water. <laughs> So we drink. Is someone trying to make a comment? When some people tell you something, you have to jump at it. Hmm. Okay. Please evaluate carefully, pray, and make a wise decision. Don't jump at anything hastily. <laughs> All right. Sister Camille, excuse me, probably um, Sister Abigail could type a comment in the chat since we didn't make out it's clearly what she said. Okay. <laughs> okay, Sister Abigail, type your comments, please. If you may. All right, so with the headache, you're drinking water one cup every 10 minutes for the next 90 minutes, an hour and a half. And you put your timer on, you write one cup, and every time you drink a cup, you cross it off in order to keep track. And uh, you do that until you have drunk all nine cups or until the headache or migraine is gone. As a caution, do not use this remedy if you are on any type of fluid restriction, if you cannot take fluids or you shouldn't be drinking so much water. So that is a caution there. But as an addition to drinking water for headache, migraines included, a hot foot bath, with 30 minutes with half cup mustard powder will help with headaches in conjunction with the above remedy, as I said. A hot foot bath is basically you have your feet submerged in hot water, as hot as you can bear it, for 30 minutes. And the water may cool off, so you keep topping up with hot water. And uh, you want to be careful with this hot foot bath for persons who cannot feel sensation in their feet and their limbs, such as persons with diabetes, you would want to be careful not to do this hot foot bath because they may not feel the heat and they may get burns. So be mindful of that. But as a standard for headache migraine, use your water intake, one cup every 10 minutes for 90 minutes. Or until the headache is gone. Some of us may have had a toothache and I know persons have said that they could bear probably every other type of pain, but you see a toothache, that one, mm a bit of a challenge. So what we're gonna do for toothaches, we will mix about one tablespoon of activated charcoal and add a couple drops of clove oil and a tiny bit of water. 
you're mixing a paste, not as thick as peanut butter, but you're making it to be spreadable. You get a piece of gauze, you cut out a quarter size, you put a little dollop, a drop of this charcoal mixed in the center, roll into a bowl and place in the mouth where the toothache is. And this has been known to take away infections as well as abscesses. I know some persons would have used clove oil only, and that works too, but for greater effectiveness, you can use the activated charcoal, which is powerful, as we learned last week, and use that on the inside, and you may also spread the mixture on the outside of the jaw as well for greater effectiveness. So there we have our toothache remedy. If you have muscle problems, such as the pulled muscle, a strained muscle, um, tightness, sore, charlie horse, twitching, you will need to make a magnesium drink right away. How you make this drink? A handful of spinach, a handful of parsley, a handful of cilantro, you put into a blender with a little water, blend on high for about a minute, and you strain and drink throughout the day. And this will give relief for muscle problems. For acne and facial blemishes, we saw where we could have used tea tree oil or oregano oil. In this case, we are using honey where you wash the face with very hot water, then pat dry, apply good quality honey to the face, and you spread all over like a mask. You leave on for 30 minutes, you wash off with very hot water, so that you can bear it, then rinse with cold water to close back your pores, dry your face, and you do this every day for two weeks. And you may add a pinch of turmeric or saffron, as we know it, if the blemishes are not open. But of course, we want to look at why there is acne, why there is a facial blemish, and treat with that holistically, as with everything else. So, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is a wonder herb. And if there were only two things you can have in your medicine cabinet, let number one be charcoal and number two be cayenne pepper. They are just so great for health and healing. And we'll see some of the reasons why. Cayenne pepper is a herb you want to have with you at all times. So it's useful for chills, heart failure, and shock, especially those needing quick attention. With a quarter teaspoon of cayenne powder placed directly under the tongue, it can reverse heart attacks, it can reverse strokes. It has the most dramatic effect because the small capillaries immediately dilate and blood flow is increased to every part of the body. It can be used for poor circulation, cold feet, arthritic joints, cramped muscles, and an underactive thyroid. But of course, again, we want to look at the full reason why we have these issues. To stop bleeding, sprinkle cayenne pepper on a cut. Now you may think it will burn and you're already dealing with the, the hurt and pain of a cut, but sprinkle cayenne pepper on it and those broken vessels will constrict and heal. And I've even heard of a testimony where someone had a gunshot wound and was bleeding and cayenne pepper was packed in that wound and the bleeding stopped. Cayenne pepper, our wonder. Now with cayenne pepper, I know that some persons like to sprinkle it on their food and have it as a daily food item. 
but cayenne pepper should be used medicinally so that if there is a problem, you use it for that and not eat it every day. Because what will happen is that your body will get accustomed to it. And when you try to use it medicinally, it would not have the effect that you desire. So please let cayenne pepper be used medicinally. Yes, Sister Patricia. You had your hand up? Okay. Yeah, hold on, I was trying to unmute. Um, I'm just I'm trying to find out two things. One, when we're talking about the cayenne pepper, are we talking about the same one that we buy in the grocery, in the powdered form, in the pack? Uh, or are, and, and the second one, I'm mm -hmm. hearing you talking. You know, once you hear the word pepper, you start thinking about burning, right? So when mm -hmm. you're talking about like sprinkle it on cut and you know, um, mm -hmm. is is there going to be literally burning effect happening as well? Only for a little while. <laughs> Only for a little while. All right. And in terms of the type, um, yes, there is a powder. What I'm not seeing though on the packages of the powdered ones would be the heat units. And that's important because you want something like upwards of 90,000 heat units. Um, you may see that on the liquid cayenne, but not so much on the powdered packs. But I saw online there were some selling where the heat units were identified. So you want to try to get upwards of 90,000 heat units. Um, but use what you have. God is okay. more than able. Okay. He, okay. What, what do you have in your hand? <laughs> and with faith, all things are possible. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just, um, I would have liked to, well, Next time, whenever we have the presentation, you know, if we can have like some pictures of it so that we have an idea of, you know, um, what we're talking about. Okay. Sure. When they say, okay, you want to check and see that, you know, and that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Noted. Thank you so much. All right. So we're looking at the cayenne pepper poultice. And poultice should be a familiar word by now. And it's basically where we apply the herb or oil to the affected area using paper towel or a soft cloth. And you sprinkle with olive oil and also sprinkle with one third teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And uh, you make that poultice or compress and you place directly on the affected area. You wrap with the plastic wrap, you cover with cloth or socks. If, um, if it's a circulation, you place it under the feet, you wrap it up nicely, you put on your socks and the poultice will warm up and may get very hot. When that happens, you remove it and clean the area. Cayenne pepper, in my experience, once you put it on externally, you may not feel anything right away, but it will get warm. And uh, so be careful with the amount. If it gets very warm, remove it because you can, you know, get, enjoy yourself and uh, just be mindful of that. For severe cases of cold feet, this poultice can be applied every three to four days until the feet remain warm. It can also relieve a congested head and a tight congested chest, and it's effective when used in conjunction with an onion poultice on the chest, which we learned on day one in terms of the onion poultice. All right. This is uh, some more information in terms of cayenne pepper for heart attacks. And this is where 
um, we have the 90,000 heat units, where you place one pinch of cayenne pepper in, of 90,000 heat units under the person's tongue and also mix one teaspoon and up one cup of water and have person drink this if they are able to. If they are not able to and they are unconscious, you lay their head to the side and scoot two droplets of cayenne tincture, the liquid cayenne, anywhere from 90,000 to 180,000 heating units under the tongue. And this will reverse a heart attack. In the cases of stroke, you do the same as for the heart attack and also place half teaspoon cayenne pepper and half teaspoon mustard powder in hot bath water. Let the person soak in the warm bath water. You watch him so that he does not faint. And uh, you can also mix one ounce each of fluid extract of black cohosh and wood betony. Those are herbs with the one teaspoon cayenne tincture. And you give every 30 minutes until the patient improves, then continue every one to two hours as their condition warrants. Or you can give the person a foot bath in hot water with mustard and cayenne. But again, with the hot water, you want to make sure that the person doesn't have any issues where they cannot feel heat and then they will be burnt in the process. You can also wring out a piece of flannel soaked in hot water with the mustard and cayenne and you wrap this around a hot water bottle and place on the feet. This is in the case of strokes. As a basic, you're using cayenne pepper under the tongue as in the case for the heart attack. When it comes to low blood pressure, cayenne pepper also will work in bringing it up. So you put half teaspoon cayenne pepper in one cup of water and you drink immediately. Or you put a pinch of salt on the tongue of the person and have them drink one cup of water. So that's low blood pressure. In the case of high blood pressure, we want to have this person drink about six cups of water. If the person is not on a fluid restriction, so you need to ask them first. You chop two cloves of garlic really well and let them swallow it and you recheck the blood pressure in 20 minutes. Now, if the blood pressure is very high, you can insert a clove of peeled garlic that has been crisscrossed on the tip into the rectum and lubricated with olive oil, but not the area that was cut. All right, so you're putting it the opposite way. And you also give cayenne pepper under the tongue for any chest pain. You want to make some fresh beet juice, give them that as well and have them drink within 30 to 45 minutes, not sooner, no later than that time. And these slides will be made available to you so you have your notes to get into action as the case may warrant. As a hydrotherapy method for high blood pressure, which I tried with my brother Mark at one time, praise God, you do a hot arm bath where you submerge both arms at the same time in a container with warm water. You gradually increase for effectiveness and you check the blood pressure every 10 minutes or so. And this helps to bring down blood pressure and there is no risk of cardiac collapse. This is a hydrotherapy method. Um, also, sunlight can bring down blood pressure. This is something I tried with Mark as well. <laughs> You all know he had that challenge of um, a bad stroke and suffering with high blood pressure. So sunlight, that vitamin D, powerful. And it's amazing that God gave us so many free things that we can use for health and healing. So hot and bath or sunlight. And you keep monitoring the blood pressure and you see it going down. 
So the Lord says in 3 John 1, 2, as I wrap up for this evening, beloved, my love, the ones I cherish, the ones whom I hold dear to my heart, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. There isn't another scripture that I have seen where the Lord says, I wish. So this tells us that this is a great desire. And if we would only hearken diligently to the health laws, we would surely prosper in health. Even as our soul prospers. So you would have heard me saying that we need to look at the holistic person and the holistic reason for disease and sickness and what do we do in the case of sickness even though we have these quick remedies we want to get to the cause so in the case of sickness the cause should be ascertained get a diagnosis unhelpful conditions should be changed wrong habits corrected then it is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to re-establish right conditions in the system. Ministry of Healing, page 127, paragraph 1. And so I appeal to us again, we cannot expect the Lord to work a miracle for us while we neglect the simple remedies he has provided for our use, which aptly and opportunely applied will bring about a miraculous result. Therefore, pray, believe, and work. I encourage all of us. And it is not a denial of faith to use the simple remedies. God gave it to us. Some persons may think, I just need to pray and not do anything else. But faith without works is dead. And what the Lord has given, he surely wants us to use. So all we need to do is pray, believe, and work, and we can stand still and see the glory of God. If anyone is interested in a full health consultation for any disease, any illness, I am available. I am a gospel medical missionary, a healthcare educator, lifestyle counselor, a disease reversal mentor, I also do massage therapy services for relaxation and healing and also hydrotherapy services as part of the healing program. Feel free to contact me. My number is 367-3165 or my email, camilloxanjames at gmail.com. I encourage all of us to be health-wise and I pray that God would bless us as we seek to prosper in health and prosper in soul. So thank you and God bless you. If there are any questions, I'll take them at this time. If there are any comments or testimony, we will be glad to hear them as well. You are welcome Good night. Yes, Sister Camille, I have a question, but it's not pertaining to your presentation tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I'd just like to find out for detox purposes, mm -hmm. how often should one take a, a detox enema? Hmm. Okay. Well, an enema should be used for emergency cases. But you want to look at why you would need to use that. Um, what is happening with the body? So I will strongly recommend that we do a full health consultation, see what is happening, and not just apply a remedy and say, okay, I'm doing it every two weeks or every month, as the case may be, because we are about holistic healing as God has designed. All right, so Sister Christiana. Thank you. Take my number and let's chat. <laughs> yes, I have done that. I have done that. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> good night, good night. Uh, 
Good night, Brother Joe Phil. Good night to you. I just want to say thanks. Um, I know you had mentioned, I think, was this where the, the session we was talking about the onions in the putting onions in your socks. Yes. Yeah, it really, really worked because I just suffer with bad tonsils. And mm -hmm. it really helped me a lot. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, no problem. So. Amen. 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 Yes. Spread the word. Spread the word. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that testimony. Really helpful. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's get the testimonies going. <laughs> All right, so we had two testimonies at the start. We have yet another. God is great. He really wants us to be in health, and we just have to pray, believe, and work. And by faith, we will see miracles happen. Good evening. Uh, well, I was actually called to give a uh, uh, testimony later on, but since we didn't testimonies now, I will jump in. Um, a friend of mine a week or so ago confided in me that she was feeling depressed. Mm -hmm. So I said, so I didn't ask what's the cause. I said, so um, how do you know you're depressed and if you're not just feeling sad? She said, well, she went to a therapist and she was diagnosed as, um, you know, having depression. I said, okay. So what are you going to do about it? She said she doesn't want to gain any medication. I said, have you ever heard of New Start, which is one of the few um, acronyms that we as some dentists know. And in case we don't know what it means, New Start, nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air and rest, and trusting God, right? So I said, here what to do. Just start changing one or two things because they can't change everything one time. Just start changing one or two things. I said, why not say exercise? She says, it's been a while. I said, well, hey, what? Do some exercise. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a lot. 15 minutes when you wake up or probably in the evening whenever you feel um, strong. Mm -hmm. Do 15 minutes exercise. Go and walk. It, do some deep breathing, right? And... Uh, See how you feel. Um, when I say pray, because she is Adventist, she's kind of outside now, but you know, I said, when mm -hmm. I say pray, and she said, she prayed every day. I said, Do you believe when you pray? She said, Well, you know, sometimes I said, Well, I gave a new start. I said, The last is trusting God. So whenever you feel tempted to doubt, claim a promise and say it mm -hmm. until they believe it, right? Mm -hmm. So if it is that you're feeling sad. I said, don't play no sad music. Play some worship music. Uplift your mood and everything. All right. Mm -hmm. A few days later, I checked back in with her. I said, so actually, no, she checked in with me. She called me Rods. I said, Rods, um, mm -hmm. I'm feeling much better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, so what did you start doing? She said, well, I got up this morning and I exercised. Mm -hmm. I started eating better. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, she said she went and she took a drive and whatnot. I said, well, thank you very much. I said, well, I, I'm so happy to hear that you're feeling better. The week after, I think I contacted her again. I said, well, how are you feeling? She said, I'm still exercising. Amen. And I feel so much better. And I said, hey, what? A friend and I, we are actually helping each other to exercise and encourage each other and whatnot. I say, hey, well, you'll be, this, you'll be the next friend now. So mm -hmm. I'll encourage you and we'll check in on each other and make sure that we, we're doing this thing. And uh, ever since, I am very happy to say that she is doing a whole lot better. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes, the eight doctors in the house, new starts. That's what we need to do. All right. So I think that is it. 
look out for the presentation and feel free to reach out at any time. Over to you, Don. Okay, well done, well done. What a what a wonderful presentation this evening. I I indeed was blessed. What about you? What about you? And um, you know, we are here every Thursday evening from seven to eight o'clock. And uh, next week we are studying the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation 15 to be exact. So we also invite you out for that. And uh, ever so often, we will have Sister Camille on doing a health feat here. Yeah. Sometimes it goes for two or three weeks. So um, we hopefully would see her coming back probably around February time, Sister Camille, at least because we're going on a break soon. Mm -hmm. And um, then we are back out in January. So look out for different things. We are here. Look out for the, the link. Um, for the next couple of weeks, it's the same link that we would be using. So just in case you didn't get the link, just click on it, and it will take you back here next Tuesday. So I want to especially thank Sister Camille, who um, opened her eyes watered our toothpaste buds and we are asking for more sister camille so stay tuned stay tuned so we want to give god the praise and honor for blessing sister camille to be a blessing to others okay so we invite brother david to give us the closing prayer brother david Um, good night to all. Um, let me just thank Sister Camille for her wonderful presentation. And I'm looking personally forward to the next one. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Kind Lord and Heavenly Father, it's a, a joy when your people are used by you, Lord, to spread your message, Lord. Though, Lord, we know this message, it means nothing for us unless we apply it in our lives. So Father, though we thank you, Father, for the messenger and the message, we pray, O oh Lord, that the applicational power of faith will apply in our lives. Father, as we go our separate ways, help us to walk this in a narrow path. Whatever challenges we face, O oh Lord, I ask, O oh Lord, help us to trust in you. And thank you, Lord, that Brother Rodal could have been used in a mighty way to lift up one spirit. That is the essence of true gospel living. We thank you and praise the Father in Jesus' name. We pray your thanks again. Amen. Amen. God bless each one of us as we go through the week, the remainder of the week. Yeah.